Ladies and gentlemen, we are away. It is the 25th of April, 2024. It's Anzac Day in Australia. It's 8.19 p.m. What day is it today? I'm going to press pause because I don't even know what day it is. Such is my bunker life. It's Thursday, April the 25th, Central Standard Time, Mexico. Well, there we go. If you don't know what Anzac Day is in Australia, it's like Veterans Day, Australian, New Zealand Army Corps. It used to be a very, very sad day at school. They had veterans come out and tell you, don't go to war, they just kill you, it's horrible. And then uh, I think it was Tony Abbott, our Jezreel Prime Minister, who jingoistically hyped it up as a as a virtual uh, replacement for the Christian cross and sacrifice. And Anzac Day became a jingoistic call to war and it was quite disgusting. And then everyone went to Turkey by Anzac Cove, got drunk, threw up their Turkish kebabs and made fools of themselves because, you know, that's the way it rolls. Anyway, my sister spent a year in Turkey, spent flew Turkish and worked for a big Turkish millionaire, God rest Jacqueline Ann O'Connell, God rest her soul. Oh boy, what are we gonna talk about today? Well, Mary was out and about catching up with General Flynn. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about General Flynn, the occultist. He is the literal Nazi, and I mean Nazi, like racist Nazi. No, I mean literal National Socialist. And you might ask what that number 18 is on his jacket. We're going to have a good chat, and we'll show Mary handing all that stuff to General Flynn at the Skagit County. Do. Well done. Job well done. Her and Dawn. It's amazing. They went out and they, they left their homes. We're going to talk about that. We'll also talk about, of course, the colonels accusing Charles Flynn, his brother, General Flynn's brother, of culpability when they were ready to go and restore order. They were held back. Why were they held back? Oh, I don't know. I got a few ideas. We'll attach General Flynn with Alexander Dugan and Alexander Crowley in the city of London. Remember, it's not that it's not that Flynn is a um, Russian asset. He's a city of London Kissinger asset, and that's what most people miss. We'll also talk about a bomb plot in Sydney. My good friend over there, one of my faithful, faithful friends, um, this Jewish Zionist fucking dickhead, uh, made up a bomb and threatened a guy with a pro-Palestinian flag and was not charged with terrorism, was charged with very light charges. We'll talk about the shooting up of mosques in my hometown while I did three years jail. We'll talk about the Fink's motorcycle gang. We'll talk about uh, the people I was in jail with. Like this clown, Brent Recker, who electrocuted himself in 2019. Does that light guy look really mean and vicious to you? He was the biggest dick, coward, dumbass, lowlife rat that ever walked the earth. And I'm going to give you all the gossip on the Finks and good old Mr. Wallace, the man who organized my beating in jail. And this rat, Troy McCanty, a Mason Jew. And uh, what else will we call him? The most biggest rat to have ever walked the earth in Australia. Absolute piece of garbage. Silvestri, rapist, pedophiles, totally protected by the WA police. And we'll go into that and how I integrated all of that into my document. These were the people I was up against. And I told them to all go fuck themselves because that's the kind of guy I am. Let us attend. In cyber, and cyber is a real domain of power. In cyber, and cyber is a real domain of power. Ladies and gents, let's talk Michael Flynn. Mary and Dawn, of course, left their bunkers, their basements, and off they tootled to actually meet other human beings with Lee's flyers and QR codes and all that other stuff. Uh, if you didn't know, remember Lee who ambushed Steve Bannon and had the effect with Steve Bannon after getting Lee's flyers is suddenly talking about, oh, you've been rubbing up with China. I'm telling you now, Steve Bannon didn't know. If I could convince you of one thing, just one thing, these people don't know. And if you got off your ass and went out and mixed and mingled and ambushed these people, you know what I mean by ambush, save that other ambush for a long way down the track. You've got about 50 other ambushes you can do, all peaceful to do with information. This is an information war at the moment. But of course, you have the freedom and the capacity and written into your constitution and numerous presidents have warned you that you have a right to violent self-defense, but that time is not now. But rest assured, Flynn and the gang will definitely want to drum up 
some violence because that's what he does. He doesn't work for Russia. He doesn't work for China. He doesn't work for the left. He doesn't work for the right. General Michael Flynn is an occultist, a student of Alastair Crowley, and an agent for the City of London linked in with Kissinger, Rupert Murdoch, and the gang. It's not right wing. It's not left wing. Just as Likud and Benjamin Netanyahu are not right wing politicians. They are occultist, mass murdering, Satanist, fucking scum. If I made myself clear, it's not left or right. They're all run by the same damn crew. Let's pop over to this Patreon post. You will, of course, know Mary Silver. Well, many of you don't know who she is because no one's going to cross promote with her. She is the only human being politically moving out there, running for Congress, chatting with very interesting people, very interesting people out there in real life land. I'll say no more because I've been told I'm not allowed to. Mary, this was uh, last night, I might add, which was the 24th of April. Mary handed General Flynn the book by Francis Stoner Saunders, The Cultural Cold War, How Wall Street, The Foundation System, and the City of London funded art, culture, books, conferences, movies, and television shows to shape the perceptions of Americans during the City of London funded Cold War. Now, trying to do the same again. Cold War 2.0. Had the war on terrorism, got all the movement control mechanisms in place. Now it's back to the old stability of the Cold War. Build robots and drones, then set them all on us. Today, they fund the alt-media whores and IIA operations. Mary and Dawn thought Flynn would really appreciate the book contents. And Mary wrote in the book to General Flynn, I am running for Congress for the National Guard whistleblowers. They're the ones that dobbed on him and his brother Charles. Sorry, his brother Charles uh, for the January the 6th riots. And for all the men and women of the intelligence community and our military who defend our people and our principles from all enemies, foreign and domestic, sincerely, Mary Silver. And there is Mary and Dawn at the Scargate County General Flynn event. I took that from some video, which we will put into an interview I just did with um, Mary just very briefly. Sorry, I hadn't had all my coffee, so I did interrupt a bit. And there is Mary as a VIP. She got in touch there with General Flynn with the number 18. That's Combat 18. It's saying I'm a Nazi. Don't tell me it's anything else. I know exactly what he's up to. He's a national socialist. That's why he's hanging with Caviezel and Mel, Mel Gibson. If you know the history of Mel Gibson and his father, Hutton Gibson, always on. Hutton Gibson is a literal Nazi, like literally a Nazi. Now, that's why Mel Gibson does nothing. Always gets drunk, stoned off his head on cocaine, beats up his Russian Israeli hooker wives, and hangs out with his Israeli Defense Force bodyguards. So there's Mary handing in the book by Francis Stoner Saunders, The Cultural Cold War, which we really thought General Flynn would appreciate. And that's really who is running things. And there is Francis Stoner Saunders. And what does that 18 mean on his jacket? That's combat 18. One is the letter A, and eight is the letter H. Adolf Hitler. And there we go. And there's the Proud Boys, same operation. There's two rats in the ranks there, Flynn and Roger Stone. No joke. Roger Stone, of course, friends with Robert David Steele, CIA, Marine, FBI, Psychological Warfare Training Officer, wrote the memoir for General Al Gray, who the great K. Grigg said was one of the most evil men she ever met. He started the Marine Psychological Warfare Training School in NATO. There's General Jim Jones, who Roger Stone knows very well, no matter how much he tries to deny it. There's Stone and Steele over there at the restaurant, I've forgotten the name, in Washington, D.C., which was exposed by a good old hell, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, thank you for that. That was worth exposing. Uh, you know, nothing to see here. It's just Robert David Steele, the Marine Psychological Warfare Training Officer, whose daughter Beth Ann Steele is in the FBI as a uh, public relations officer. There they are all on InfoWars. There's Clay Clark. You remember, um, you will remember good old um, Julian Romanello, who I believe is sincere, sincerely stupid, but sincere uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, telling me, hey, Brendan, you know, kind of keep it on the low down, but we have a, uh, the people that are funding the Clay Clark Take Back America to who are like really rich Texans, pro-gun, those sorts of people. Uh, they really like you. We don't know how, but we would like to try and get you to the United States. And I go, what are you doing? Don't interact like this. We're grassroots. Now I'm compromised. Now you're, you know, these people are funding Flynn, the De Defense Intelligence Agency. What the fuck? Take their fucking money, but they don't tell us what to do. And she said, no, no, no. They don't trust Flynn either. And they hate Alex Jones and Roger Stone. And then why are they funding them, Julianne? 
And there's Clay Clark. Thank you, Julianne. I believe she's just stupid. I don't believe she's evil or in on it. There's, of course, Clay Clark. You know, nothing to see here. There's Flynn doing his little, uh, his little prayer, Theosophical Society prayer, which we're going to watch right now. Let me tell you a story. When this first propped up and people started talking about Flynn and his Theosophical prayer, I was like, Oh, they've read Codex of Magica by, by Tex Mars, God rest Tex Mars. King James Bible or a fiery end to you, ladies and gentlemen, the great Tex Mars. Um, one of the classics. Um, the old guard, I, I keep remembering, forgetting to, to, to let people be remembered of Tex Mars. But um, Codex of Magica, a book definitely worth getting. But they've read it, so now everything's a hand signal. That's a hand signal. That's a hand signal. That's a hand signal. Because the, the, the Pharisees, they don't want to work for a living, get out there and engage in politics. So they sit all fucking day on the internet looking for your hand signals. And I laughed about it. And someone said, no, 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 Brendan, you need to go and watch that prayer. It will freak you out. And I was totally freaked out. Let's get that up now, in case you don't know about it. General Flynn's Occultic Prayer in Church, Seven Rays of Life, Elizabeth Clare Prophet. We are your instrument of those sevenfold rays and all your archangels, all of them. I am here, O oh God, and I am the instrument of those sevenfold rays and archangels. We will not retreat. We will not retreat. We will stand our ground. And I will not retreat. I will take my stand. We'll, we will not fear to speak. We will be the instrument of your will, whatever it is. I will not fear to speak, and I will be the instrument of God's will, whatever it is. In your name, and the name of your legions. Here I am, so help me God, in the name of Archangel Michael and his legions. We are freeborn, and we shall remain freeborn. I am freeborn, and I shall remain freeborn. And we shall not be enslaved, not be enslaved. By, any foe. by any foe, within or without. And I shall not be enslaved by any foe, within or without. <laughs> He's going to say it's a lodge prayer. Jesus came to free the slaves. We love Jesus. We're in a we're in a lodge. Bloody blah, blah, bloody blah, blah, blah. Um, but I assure you, Michael Flynn is not praying to who you think he's praying to. If you're a member of a lodge and they were feeding you this shit, they are fucking liars. All right, they are liars. So watch out. Yes, I understand the lodges, please. I understand the lodges more than you fucking understand them. All right, you are a fucking clueless fool. They're not going to tell you who they're really praying to, which is ultimately Lucifer. You have the wank, the wanky dickhead Satanists like the Anton LaVey's of the world, all right? And they're all a bunch of fools. And the Christians of the last American vagabond, another member of Anton LaVey's church and a, a deponent of Alastair Crowley. And then they have the cultured Jungian types who read their Carl Gustav Jung. Of course, Jung would never approve of what they're doing. And on and on and on it goes. You're a slave to God. What does that mean? Slave to God. Well, you'll have to find out for yourself. But if you can't work out what is right and what is wrong, and if you have to join something because your ego is too weak to stand the terror, the void of complete loneliness, if you have no connection with the Holy Spirit or the Mysterium Conjunctio, whatever you want to call it, then you're pretty much fucked. If you cannot trim your wick, if you cannot get the oil in your lamp, then you are not going to make it. End of story. If you have joined a lodge, you need to leave. You need to leave and tell the truth. That's all you have to do. Tell the truth. It's nothing fancy. It's very easy. You've got to learn what good old General Flynn really is. You really do. So, you know, there he is with uh, Vladimir Putin and there's Vladimir Putin's brain, Alexander Dugan. He's like the Steve Bannon of Russia. He speaks all day of destroying the United States, blah, blah, blah. Now, his father was a Russian GRU general, which is Soviet military intelligence. He is a great lover of Alastair Crowley. And there he is doing his prayer. Again, there he is on Alex Jones. He was on Alex Jones three times. Alex Jones got a Russian visa. I remember it well. Bra him bragging about it. That was Alex's visa that he bragged about and even put on his website. <laughs> 
All right, that was his visa. And now let's watch Dugan. And you're not going to quite believe this. I know you're not going to believe it. I thought it was a bit of a joke. This was 1996. Oh my God. Един твой исток, един твой дух, едино твое изменение. Позволь мне воспеть твои совершенства перед людьми. В образе шестиконечной звезды, сверкающей в твой дух позволь мне объявить о твоих совершенствах. Ты явился мне как очень старый бог, да ты почти мой бог, господин времени, с острым серпом. Ты явился мне как радостный и довольный бог, исполненный могущество, король, отец, в самом рассвете сил. And no, 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 no. Go and watch it yourself. It's all linked below. Okie dokie. That's good old Alexander Dugan. You know, there's tranny porn loving, weirdo, whack job, group sex, moron, dick pill, half bred Satanist Alex Jones. Morris Pinay, Dugan, quote, we must use the new left and new right to destroy the West. There's Jackson Hinkle, just another bunch of half-wits who just appear on the scene, heavily cross-promoted. Remember, it's not Russian. It's not Soviet. It's not even communist. It is the city of London with the links right into Kissinger. Remember Soros, 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 Soros. I thought, what happened to Kissinger? Everyone forget about Kissinger? The Glarch globalists of globalists? The literal right hand of Rothschild? Hello. Oh, uh, Alex Jones actually said when our army of flying monkeys went over to Alex Jones Info and started harassing the shit out of his comment section on Kissinger. Jones, Kissinger's nothing. Zibi Brzezinski was the, was the guy. He was the guy. You know, Zibi Brzezinski, another foreigner, um, like good old German Jewish existentialist Heinz Kissinger, anything goes, which is Satanism. Um, Luciferian scientific rationalist, which is communism, where they first put it on Russia. And um, Zibi Brzezinski, the techno-fascist, they're, they're all tied in. That's why they love Hitler. So Hitler was a, was a highly intelligent, gifted artist. They always mock him. He was, not, he was not just some dickhead. He was a gifted artist. He was a war hero. He'd won the Iron Cross first class twice in a very dangerous job, a regimental runner. You're the number one target for artillery, the number one target for snipers. He was a very, very brave soldier, and he suffered from PTSD, he was gassed, and the traumas of the war. Um, so stop putting the guy down. He was into architecture, the fine arts. He was not into uber fucking much black metal. <laughs> right? <laughs> the goose stepping, the parades, all the silliness, th that's the pantomime stuff. All right? Flynn is a Nazi. He's a National Socialist. National socialist, not nationalist fascist. He was a national socialist. Okay, it's socialism, and as they said in Perestroika, as as they and I've got a very good video I want to show you on that, the Perestroika deception, and as uh, uh, you can see some of the translated documents from when um, good old um, good old uh, Gorbachev, Gorbachev says socialism isn't the way they wanted to tear down and rebuild again under the guise of socialism, be a friend of the West, penetrate, infiltrate. And they started that in the 1970s. What else happened in the 1970s? That was Yuri and Dropoff. Right, what else happened at that time? You had Kissinger, Yevgeny Premakov, multipolar world order. That was the beginning, 1973. You had detente with the Soviet Union. Kissinger's over there with Nixon, uh, with the Chinese Communist Party. And that was the beginning of the operation. City of London. Russia, Soviet Union ain't doing this. This is the City of London. They are their sub officers. They are actors. This is a tiny clique of literal Satanists. They are literally Satanists. But they're in suits. We call them commies in suits. It's the same thing. Devoid of God. Man is the God. Man is the scientific rationalist. And man will interpret what God wants via his conscience, his pure light of Lucifer. Sounds very dramatic, but it's just, we'll do whatever we want because the AI numbers. We've crunched the numbers. Sorry, five billion of you have to die to maintain the environment of the earth. Nothing personal. Do you understand? So while you think of it, it's not like that at all. It comes in a very banal, horrible, horrible way. Getting back to this. So when you start to understand Satanism in its true form, scientific rationalism, communism, a beautiful prayer to the hero, 
Colonel Michael Aquino, the Satanist pedophile from the Presidio, which we all talked about in the late 90s and early 2000s. Everybody knew all about Michael Aquino. You never hear about it now. American military intelligence, psychological mind war uh, with Sammy Davis Jr. and Anton LaVey, the Church of Satan. Now, I'm going to show you something. If you don't think Whitney Webb and that last American vagabond and that crew and James Corbett are not involved in Satanism and Alastair Crowley, please. What do you think that fucking is? There he is. Look at him. The last American vagabond. You know, there are a bunch of Alastair Crowley, Satanists, the Luminous, the Clown Show. This guy is pushing Xi Jinping and saying, horrible Steve Bannon and the CIA are besmirching the fine name of the organ-thieving Chinese Communist Party. Couldn't tell you about Heinz Kissinger. Couldn't tell you about his friendship with Klaus Schwab. Couldn't tell you about Putin's friendship with Klaus Schwab and Kissinger. Told you absolutely nothing. And fucking Whitney Webb went right along with it till March 2023 when she appeared on the arch Zionist whore himself, Glenn Beck. Oh, maybe Putin's not such a good guy after all. After years of haranguing her. Years of it. You telling me he's not a member of the Church of fucking Satan? Get a fucking grip, please. Put him on the list. Devil worshipper holds sensitive army posts and top brass say no problem. Of course. That's Kissinger and Associates. That's the think tank movement. Now, Roger Stone, you know the group sex guy? You know him, Roger Stone, Mr. Group Sex. You remember all his friendship? Him and Manafort? Every dirty trick with General Jim Jones? Oh, uh, I'm not friends with General Jim Jones. No, you're friend with his son, who's also called Jim Jones. You were outed by Patrick Berge. Thank you, Patrick Berge. You know, and they're all friends with who? Oh, good old Clay Clark. You know, nothing to see here. There's Infowars. There's a little, there's a little wing and skull. I'm sure that's just a. I guess someone left that. It was a. It was a. What do you call it? A Halloween party or something? And they must have left that stuff there. There's Putin tummy kissing Putin, close friend of Klaus Schwab, Evgeny Primakov, the multipolar world order. Yeah, this is fine. There's uh, from the documentary Get Me a Roger Stone. That's Roger Stone posing as Napoleon with that nice little, uh, nice little hand position there. And that's the source of it all. Soviet Union, Russia's got no power. China's got no power. Israel's technically got no power. It's all coming through the City of London East India Company. Lord Yochel Rothschild, all the way into Paris, France, Frankfurt, Germany, Basel, Switzerland, New York, Wall Street, Moscow, coming down through that. That's a good, simple explanation. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the basic explanation. That's why they never say Heinz Kissinger, despite him being front and center, day in, day out, day in, day out. No, you seriously think those effers, the Whitney Webbs and the James Corbett's of this world and that little crew of Satanists didn't know this? You think they didn't know? So what does that number 18 on the jacket mean? <laughs> I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> La Cosha Nostra, 666 Fifth Avenue. Yeah, General Flynn warns of the new American Civil War. We know exactly what's going on, Flinny boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling. From Glen to Glen on the fucking list. Well done, Mary. And I will show you a very quick video. Watch Flynn's eyes. Because Mary's got a great book. And you can see Michael Flynn staring intently at it. Gold, ladies and gentlemen, gold for Australia, gold for America. Sorry, you have to be over 50 in Australia to understand what I am talking about. Gold for Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, watch carefully. So here's the meet and greet. This is where Flynn stands and says hi. Need a insurrection and a civil war started. Just to let you know, um, I have a few contacts here and there. When they first discussed this January the 6th, stop the steal, people said, don't do it. It's a stupid idea. They told the president, Trump, directly, do not do it. You're going to put a million people in Washington, D.C. You're going to have Democrat operators. You're going to have military intelligence. You're going to have the FBI down there. You're going to have Secret Service down there. And it's going to be fucking chaos and it's going to look bad. We know what's going to happen. They're going to have their provocateurs. And Flynn's going, no, no, no. And and, and good old Owen Troy, you want a revolution? And Ali Akbar's down there, you want a revolution? And Alex Jones, be down there. January the 6th, take back the steel. You want a revolution? None of them went to fucking jail. Then when everyone was picking up on fucking Alex Jones, who's booed off the stage, half the time and Clay Clark's going, he's not a bad guy. Owen Schroer got sent to minimum security club fed where he worked on his golf swing uh, for six months. Meanwhile, everyone else was doing hard time in, in solitary confinement and isolation for fucking three years. Work it out. 
There was Flynn front and center leading the whole thing and his brother Charles. And we'll show that little bit where in the congressional hearings uh, you have four honorable patriotic Americans from the National Guard, various sorts, long 20, 30 year uh, professionals in the military saying Charles fucking Flynn. General Flynn's brother refused to release them to restore order when they were begging, please help us. The Washington, D.C. Uh, police, please help us. And you know the story. They were opening the doors. All their agents of, of chaos were in there. Kissinger and Associates. Kissinger wanted Trump out. Fucking Jared Kushner. The whole 666 Fifth Avenue. Chabad Lubavitch. Uh, fucking uh, BB wanted him out. They all wanted rid of Trump. He didn't do the job because Pompeo and Mattis got a hold of him. I don't care what you think of Pompeo and Mattis. They got a hold of him and said, stop, we are not withdrawing from NATO. We are not withdrawing from Europe. We are not withdrawing from the Middle East. And Trump said, yeah, sounds good to me. We can make some more money because they spoke in his language. And Trump came to shit out of the military industrial complex, Lockheed in particular. He came to shit out of the gas pipeline deals between Germany and Russia. That was Trump administration. And Biden has kept over 90% of the foreign policy of the Trump administration has changed next to nothing, nothing. And there is Flynn, front and center. So he got confronted by someone. Watch his eyes. I think it's very funny. I know it's I'm Mary Selva. It's from Boston. Yeah. Yes. Try to get up there. Yeah, this is me. And I brought you presents. This is a book. Um, it's about the cultural culture. I, I felt like everything you talked about was right, was right there with us. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I want to keep you. I know you got a lot of people. Thank you. <laughs> as i take back america from my mexican bunker look ooh, hand signs ooh, hand signs jeez charles johnson you're my hero i hang with peter thiel but i can't mention your name it's getting tiring you're gonna put the state police out my door with the lights on again is that the next message? Look, I was deliberately provoking with a few messages, all right? It's okay. Just a bit tired. All these heavy Pluto aspects are really, don't bring me down. No, 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 no. Woo I'll tell you once more. Fuck, I almost want to play that now. What a classic. Don't bring me down. Don't bring me down. Oh, no. Oh, I keep forgetting NVIDIA. NVIDIA, AMD would always let me sing. NVIDIA's crap. I don't like your sound suppression, NVIDIA. So anyway, there is Millery and Dawn out and about doing shit like, I don't know, getting in people's faces. You will remember Lee, of course, doing exactly that. Hey, Steve, real quick. I want to give this information. Russian penetration of Israel. And uh, Microsoft, Intel... Cyber attacks on the rise because of uh, Russia and Israel. So I want you to look yeah, into that for me, please. There's the gate right here to the council. Hey, Steve, are you looking into that for us? Awesome, man. I appreciate it. You're the man, dude. You are the man, Thank dude. You. Yeah. Steve's going to read the flyer. Here we go. Short time later, he's having a go at Bibi, saying you're rubbing up on China while you're not even an ally. You know that's direct response of Lee doing that. He's got a great video coming up very soon. There he is. Let's uh, show the flyer, shall we? That's one side. It was a card, actually, really highly quality. He did a great job on this. And um, there we go. That was the other side. Were you aware Microsoft Core Codes changed history? Lee did that. One guy did some printouts. He didn't have uh, a multi-million dollar group of uh, millionaires behind him. He just went out and he did it. Still alive. He's still, he's still kicking. Still editing. We're getting the final copy. It's going to be a 10-minute beautiful video that will be top front and center on all future flyers with a QR code. And it just bang, bang, bang. Really, really good video. 10 to 12 minutes. It's like, oh, I used to be able to do that. My brain won't work. Um, so he's done a great job on that stuff. And you've seen Mary and Dawn. 
So of course, you're thinking, well, they must be super special forces soldiers. I mean, they just have to be. They couldn't just be ordinary organic people just saying, I've got to do something just like I did all those years ago when I sat in Perth, Western Australia on, um, I've forgotten the name of the road, near the Swan River um, and said, well, if not me, who? If not now, when? I literally said that. Well, because Mike Delania told me to F off, the guy that did... Um, the original and best Missing Links, the first really good video that uh, took the work of Christopher Bolin. Of course, then Delaney with John Allen Martins and that great Barry White voiceover. Uh, good old Mike Delaney, the little street thug asshole, but I'll always respect him. He was very good at what he did. He got out there on the streets. Nobody was, you know, he really started something big. And then he discovered his National Socialist Hitler roots. And everyone went, what the fuck are you doing? You were putting anti-Hitler stuff out. And he said, no, no, Brendan, I've seen the light. You need to look this up. And I'm going, dude, stop it. No, no, no. And he just said, well, why don't you F off and do your own fucking stuff? Because all the clown show, little jealous, spiteful, pathetic, coke-dealing white nationalists were upset at him because he got out there and did stuff and their FBI handlers were furious. You're not meant to get out there and do stuff. He got the freedom bus going with what's his name, the big guy with the beard. Not all of them were hardcore national socialists. People spoke out against Hitler and said they didn't like him, but um, they were all pretty hard, tough men. Um, they're all up there in Idaho breeding like flies, producing blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan babies, unbaptized, of course, so watch out. BB might come for you. But I will always respect Mike Delaney. Why? Even though I disagree with his politics very much, he was sincere. He believed in what he's doing. He's a little fucking thug shit, but I, I, I just respect him because he got out there and he did it. No one paid him. They just went out there and made the video and wrote a script and did it. So of course, oh, it must be all it must be all intrigue. No, no, no. A couple of people just went out there and made it, wrote a script and went and did it. That's it. There's nothing magical about it. It's just normal behavior. Like when I confronted the secret stores. All right. So it doesn't matter who you are. All right. As long as you are basically believe in freedom. That's why I have trouble with national socialists, because the first fucking thing Adolf Hitler would do if he took over America would be throw your constitution out the window and you would no longer be free. Therefore, you are my enemy. And I mean it. You are my enemy. And if I had to kill you, I would fucking kill you. I would kill racist, scum, piece of shit, Jews, supremacists. And I'll do the same with any other race, black nationalist or whatever. You're scum to me. In Africa, I'm a little bit softer on black nationalists. In Europe, I'm a little softer on the white nationalist movement in Europe because you're sort of traditionally white. Fine. Okay, I get it. Plus, you're smarter, you're articulate than the fucking half-witted meth dealers they employ for the FBI over in the United States and Australia. But at the end of the day, I'm about freedom. So if you want to move to Idaho and live amongst white persons, that's your business. I don't judge you at all. If you want to move to Chicago and live, back blacks, live amongst blacks, fine. Do it. I've got nothing against it as long as you do not impinge on others. And you both are bound by this. What binds you? Freedom. And you will work together, black, white, green, yellow, Latino, whatever, for freedom. Simple. It's a very simple concept, freedom. Without freedom, you can't be a white nationalist. You can't be a black nationalist. You can't be a Wahhabist. You can't be a Muslim, a Christian, or a Jew without freedom. End of story. So get with freedom. I think that's pretty simple, don't you think? What do you reckon? Pretty simple concepts? I'm sure they are, but they're going to make it very complicated. Let's talk about an author who's a bit of a left-wing dick, but he has some things I think are apt about uh, Michael Flynn. All the links are below. The next insurrection will be national, mind war, the psychological war on democracy. Jim Stewartson. I haven't had a really good look at this guy, so to be fair, a traveling terrorist camp in the guise of a movie tour is settling the groundwork for mass chaos and violence. Just understand this. These are obviously left-wing type people. Fascist, fascist. But I, I, I do want to be cautious. I haven't had a proper look and watched the videos. And he, but he makes some very valid points. Here's the problem I have with these people. They will never fucking link to anyone outside their own little fucking cults. I despise them for this. No one will ever link to Mary. No one will ever push Mary. No one will ever go, holy hell, look at Mary. She's out there with Dawn and Lee and a couple of other people are out there handing out stuff and making t-shirts and flyers. Never going to get linked to She's never going to be asked to go on a talk show. She's going to get nothing. That is your internet. And it's not just because they're controlled alt media. They're whores. They want money. They are spiteful, narcissistic, pathological, attention-seeking pieces of shit. Pieces of shit. You have never seen a greater gathering of narcissistic, money-hungry whores than you have in this political sphere. Ever. I fucking despise them. I can't wait for the cleanup. I just can't wait for the great cleansing 
On April the 5th, the worst traitor in the history of the United States, and I would agree with that, Putin's General Mike Flynn began a 35-city national tour to honour himself as an American hero and to create a network of terrorist cells ready to act on his command for whatever black swan event he exploits or causes. There are many valid points raised. There's just one thing missing from Mr. Fucking Mind War, this guy. What is it that's missing? Let me tell you what's missing, dickhead. You dickhead. It's not Russia. It's the city of London. It's Jewish power, the political Zionist movement, in particular, La Cour de Chabad Lubavitch, Sabatian Franca, 666 Fifth Avenue. Do you understand, you fucking dumb leftist fuck? Thank you. Get it fucking right. Before I, I, Laventia Barrier will be around. There's timelines and all sorts of interesting stuff, but it's still very party political, and I'm sick to death of right versus left. Flynn was never a genius. I've spoken to people that have worked with him. He was a dickhead. Everyone hated him. He was weird. And he removed any, any of the controls that stopped things getting out of control and became the dickhead we see today as a genius. He wasn't a genius. He created chaos wherever he went and stated, Michael Flynn, radical Islam is the great enemy. <laughs> radical Islam. I don't know. Are they running the city of London banking and financial world trading guild? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it might be another Middle Eastern cult. What do you think? Anyone that says that is either a retarded fucking moron. I mean, he is retarded. You know what happened when he, um, the FBI said, what did you talk with, uh, with uh, the ambassador Kichliak or whatever his name is? I didn't talk about anything. I, I, did you talk about a UN um, thing on uh, the occupied territories and settlers? No. He must have known they had the recording. And even the FBI was saying, what the hell? He knew we had a recording. He lied through his teeth. If he had just said, yeah, I did. Yeah, probably shouldn't have done. I should have waited until we were a thing. Yeah, it was a big mistake. That would have been it. He wouldn't have been asked to resign. He had to resign after that. Now, is that is that a, 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 a mind war, psychological warfare fucking genius? Seriously? I don't think so. Flynn using satanic pedophiles plan to take down a whole nation. Links are below. I still don't like this Jim Stewart. And he's just so friggin shallow, you know, but it's but it's better than nothing. It's raising important points. Let's talk about, uh, please, Colonel accuses senior officers of blatantly lying to Congress. He's talking about Lieutenant General Charles Flynn. That's Michael Flynn's brother the clown show and there's combat 18 if you don't know what combat 18 is there's much better articles than that i just use stupid wikipedia for the hell of it let's now move on to the zionist bomb plot you're gonna love this i know someone very close to this and hopefully i'll speak to this journalist here we have the bondi clown bondi beach is of course pretty expensive real estate in sydney bomb plot backlash now this guy is a muslim i think he's from turkey the guy that runs this and he does a very good joke true news weekly i highly recommend it the link is below. I've got a friend who knows him and hopefully I can have a chat to him eventually. Bomb plot backlash. Public outcry as alleged Zionist bomber David Maurice Weiss faces sentencing without terrorism charges from the 23rd of April. This clown basically threatened his neighbor who had a pro-Palestinian flag. And so that is the journalist Serkan Odsturk or something. Is the publisher of True News Weekly. He's an investigative journalist and editor with a colorful career spanning across print, online, radio and television. He has had journalism previously featured by leading international broadcasters and media outlets such as the Sydney Morning Herald, Crikey, RT News, Rupley, Australian Doctor, Dopamine Magazine, City Hub and Star Observer. I don't know him personally, but it seems very interesting. Uh, if you are Australian, you definitely want to look at this. But this is an example of the double standard. So in a controversial case marked by allegations of police misconduct, David Maurice Wise is set to be sentenced today without terrorism or any other additional charges, despite serious accusations of constructing a bomb aimed at supporters of Palestine. The case has also drawn scrutiny and concern over claims that New South Police also distributed false information regarding Weiss's guilty plea. And they're trying to get him off with a psychiatric review. So he's a bit unstable. He's harmless. Don't worry about the bomb he manufactured and threatened and planted at that guy's house. Now, as we all know, if he was a Muslim, he would be in chains, beaten, bashed, thrown in jail for the next 50 years, as we know. And I'm going to show you in my own document just how bad the double standard really is you of course know my case where i offended some jews and i'm very upset you're very mean three years jail remember i was not put in three years jail 
for contempt of court for abusing the judge. I did. I caught him and I was fucking idiot. And, so, and he says in the sentencing, Mr. O'Connell, I'm not sending you, I should have given you more for contempt of court. I am not giving you this sentence for contempt of court. This is for what you've done, your irrational hatred of Jews. So don't let anyone ever tell you I only received that sentence for abusing the judge. And I called him lots of things, Captain Pugwash and various other things. Pretty funny. But who reads the fucking court documents anyway? Now, you remember the clown show. This is all my documents. You really have to read it. It's an excellent, this thousand page document is so detailed. People read it and say, wow, why isn't this everywhere? Well, I don't know. You tell me. So no, I was just before my trial was to begin in August and we got it set back uh, till January 2011 instead of 2010 because of this incredible contempt of court. This is JY, 15 Western, 1500 West Australians, including over 100 federal and state parliamentarians and community leaders converged, converged on the Victory Life Center in Osborne Park to stand up and support Israel. The Jewish community wanted to show support for Israel after O'Connell had been charged. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is just before the trial. 1,500 West Australians, including over 100 federal and state parliamentarians and community leaders converged on the Victory Life Evangelical Fucktard Center in Osborne Park to stand up and support Israel. And he was Jewish, uh, that's Stanley Kieser and Steve Leiblich. Now, I want you to stop and think for a little second here. Stop and think now. This is just before the original start of the trial, when it was originally meant to go ahead. They then have this event with the Deputy Foreign Minister, Danny Aylon, who you should know when you've, you've been watching the, all the Gaza goings on lately, and the Israeli ambassador, Yuval Rodham. For me, one guy sleeping on a couch. Can you believe that? Sorry, I just lost my connection. Can you believe that? Do you understand what that is, the significance of that? I'm one guy against the Israeli state, and they bring in 100 federal and state parliamentarians, the deputy foreign minister from Israel, and the Israeli ambassador. Hello? Why? Because I was raising what? Everything you see today. Everything. That is Senior Officer Paul Jarrett, who was bringing into the Fink's Motorcycle Club ecstasy, steroids, and methamphetamine. Uh, I, uh, he was fired by Minister Joe Francis, who called me directly. That's the corruption that was going on. And um, and we, you'll hear about, um, many of you know Troy McCanty. If you're an Australian, you know who Troy McCanty is. Involved in murders, and he's, he's a rat. He's been a rat for the police because his uh, he's, uh, family are Jewish, and they have uh, shoe import business. Oh, I bet they're important fucking shoes from China and a lot of meth. Um, along with uh, uh, a bunch of uh, inspectors in charge of the meth task force and people like this guy. That's the one in the special handling unit who was bringing them all the good stuff. This was the sort of uh, material I would produce, picture of evidentiary material for Magistrate Woods and Police Prosecutor. Magistrate Woods was very good. Police Prosecutor, it was giving fake names like Crook, C-R-O-O-K, Constable Crook. Um, he claimed to have worked in the UN and um, just laugh. He mocked me and I said, you're right, man. he is literally mocking and laughing at me. Well, after I presented this evidence and stuff, he just thought I was a nut. And I finally presented all this material and there was a bunch of cops in the courtroom, just cops and me and the magistrate from Sydney because they brought her in because of the corruption in Western Australia. And she said, what are you police all doing here? Are you part of this case? And they said, no, we're just here for the show, Your Honor. I mean, you just, this is worse than Australia, Cowboy City. So I produced this high quality documentation and suddenly they wouldn't even look me in the eye because the fools realize what moronic, corrupt, incompetent fools they really, really are. Uh, it's Inspector Nick Andersich demanding charges be laid for criminal contempt of court against the Friends of Israel. You've got to understand what I'm trying to get across here is I am incredibly methodical. You don't think I'm some fucking idiot. And I put it all on the record. I knew they would ignore me, but I've got it all on the record. Everything I did all for this moment. This is when police prosecutor, Mr. Fucktard Troy, um, Alan Troy, he tried to get me jailed for contempt of court for corking about the case. The court will be aware, of course, contempt in court is little utilized. He calls a hearing to have me jailed. Um, and that's something that the director of public prosecutions is actively considering as the court knows from correspondence. We want him jailed. He's talking about the case. And there is clear authority that a favorable comment, such as an assertion that an accused is innocent to the media during the course of a trial can amount to a contempt. It is, of course, a question of degree. And there is a question as to the proximity of trial. This is the documentation I've got. I want you to imagine this prick and I got him fired. They kicked him off the case, Alan Troy. I want you to imagine. Here he is asking, oh, we've got to jail him for contempt. Meanwhile, they bring in 
the Israeli ambassador, the Israeli deputy foreign minister, 100 local and federal members of parliament and 1,500 members of the community to come out directly against me four days before the trial. That's called criminal contempt of court. If you're not aware of the law, if you don't understand the court system, you're just, you're probably a bit blah. It's unheard of. It's never happened in fucking history. A foreign state is directly going after one fucking guy. Hello? Do you know why that is? Because they knew what I was presenting in court. And I thought all the espionage, all the stuff we had, and they wouldn't let me present anything because I was, I believed like a fool, I would be able to present material. Duh. Not happening. And there's that section uh, where Ariel Sharon says to Shimon Perez, I want to tell you something very clear. Don't worry about American pressure on Israel. We, the Jewish people, control America, and the Americans know it. That's from Col Israel Radio, October 3rd, 2001, reported in the Washington Report, November 2001. Page 114, under title, section titled American Educational Trust, publishes page. They just tell it to your face, such is the arrogance of the Satanists. They raided me and started a, uh, called me a terrorist and I threatened the life of Detective Elizabeth Valletta. No, I do now. If I ever see the bitch, I'll smack her in the face. I don't care if she's a female. That woman utterly destroyed any chance I had of returning to the university. She's a piece of dumb shit. And the detectives begged me to leave her alone. Leave her alone? If I fucking ever see her, that piece of corrupt shit. That piece of corrupt shit, Elizabeth Valletta, planted evidence, mounted evidence, put ridiculous charges on me and the fucking pigs from Western Australia. Oh, could you leave Liz alone? Fuck Liz Valletta. Piece of shit. Look, this is what she's, this is the email which she said was just too intense. Liz, I have a, Liz, I have a copy of the edited footage. Now what I'm asking for is Liz Valletta, you have edited the raid video footage. It cuts off at all these different points. You have edited the footage. Where is the missing footage? Like when I talk about you demanding my passwords and, and access to my encrypted uh, partitions, and I say no. And she said, we'll take you, you know, we'll charge you. I said, well, let's go to the, let's go to the High Court of Australia. This will be a humdinger. And of course, they never did a damn thing because they're full of shit. Because they're dumb. They don't even know the damn law. They edited it all out. So I keep saying, where is the unedited footage, Liz? Liz, I have a copy of the edited footage. I've repeated to you over and over. I require the unedited footage. There are at least five separate times where the video simply cuts out mid-sentence. You have failed to operate under the protocol of stating, quote, we are now turning off the video recorder, end quote. I never heard you say it once. I have to go over the video properly as court time approaches, and I expect to find some doozies. Here, I will put it in fucking picture form. I would like to remind you of Professor Robert Cunningham and his dealings with police, which included the presentation in court of edited footage of CCT footage showing his assault while his unedited copy was stolen from his UWA law office. She went and said this intense stuff, and then they told me that I, they have commenced a tango operation, that I am threatening Liz Valletta. I'm fucking threatening that bitch now, though, let me tell you. Oh, God, just I just want to lose it the fucking levels of corruption and incompetence. And then the pigs came squealing. Oh, could you leave Liz alone? These people are unaccountable. They just do whatever they fucking like. And then they come, oh. Does my head in. The audacity of these fuckers. It's a famous case, Lloyd Rainey wiretaped police. Rainey wanted to ensure he was not fitted up for the murder of his wife because Lloyd Rainey knows exactly how the WA plays. Oh, don't you, Lloyd? Saw him in the street and said, good on you, Lloyd. Tried to fit him up for the murder of his wife. Planted evidence, usual West Australian police stuff. Now, this is the material to do with me threatening to cut someone's head off. A guy called John Swin, if I ever see, I will break his face so bad it's not funny, um, reported that I threatened to cut someone's head off. This is what they use. There's a news article somewhere. Um, that they used to discredit me and say, look, look, he was charged with threatening to cut someone's head off with ISIS. This is what they didn't bother to. This is what I was charged. One comment. Hey, mate, are you the guy that threatened Mustafa at his kebab shop? Get back to me urgently and I'll see if I can work things out. Right now, he wants ISIS to cut your head off, but I figure you value your job. You are in deep, deep shit. Iranian Press TV coming over to interview Mustafa. And at that stage, they were. Iranian Press TV were coming over. From that comment, I have threatened to get ISIS to cut his head off. One comment. Then you'll see my other comment. That's Mustafa and his daughter, and he had two sons, young sons, and they threatened to kill them all. Right in front. The police just covered up because Jason Hodgkinson, the person in question, is a rat for police, a common criminal. I thought he was a OC Health and Safety Officer for a large company. He was, and now he's a meth addict. I've seen his entire criminal record. Thanks, Anthony.
And you can zoom in and see exactly what I say there. Very, uh, very polite. The police came afterwards and said, oh, dude, just take the stupid post down. Thank you. Goodbye. And they walked out. Then I was invited to... Um, I was invited to Sydney with um, to be flown to Sydney with good old um, Iran Press TV foreign correspondent um, Hamid Fadaroli, and suddenly the police decided to come and raid me and charge me, voila, and put this crap on me. And that's what people like John Swin, who uh, Jeremy Rothschild, I'll kill that motherfucker for what he did. And you ask me to work with that fucking wanky clown who was introduced to me by none other than Fred Smith, Skull and Bones, Joseph Davies. Isn't it amazing all you Greg McCarrens and Ryan Dawson's and, and John Swins and Jeremy Rothkoshels have nothing to say about Fred Smith, Skull and Bones coming to visit? Isn't that amazing? Not a fucking word because you're all political operators for the so-called left establishment. That's fucking why. Make me fucking sick. But anyway, why, uh, you know, here's all the documentation, but why do that? Hey, just say he threatened to cut someone's head off. So you'll see Mustafa there, another Muslim, again, threatened with death by well-known people, all documented. We went to the Triple C. We did everything by the book. Mariam Etay, his daughter, was terrified. They, she'd had her hijab ripped off at school. This is in northern Western Australia. It's full of South African fucking Jews, the scummiest of the scum Jews, the South African Jews, pieces of shit, low-life, racist scum. And they went into his kebab shop to run him out of town. That's literally what they did. I am not exaggerating. Mustafa is now somewhere in Egypt. He's lost everything, his wife, his family and they destroyed his fucking life. That's you, Elizabeth Valletta. I'm going to make sure every Muslim all over the fucking world knows what you did, Elizabeth Valletta. Every fucking Muslim knows what you did. You pathetic, disgusting, corrupt pig. Seconded to the fucking Australian Federal Police. And I talked to a few of the local coppers and they said they fucking hate you. You are despised. You are known as a prissy fucking whining bitch and nobody wants to work with you. Elizabeth fucking Valletta. You know what you fucking did, you piece of shit. And not a fucking thing to that scum Jewish little rat. They did nothing. When you're Muslim, you're in fucking jail. When you're a Jew, it's free. Do whatever you fucking like. So let's get now to the shooting up of the Perth Mosque. So again, I'm doing three years jail. Um, some Jewish sign, a scumbag in Bondi Beach, filthy rich Jew is is planting bombs, literally, and not, they won't they won't. Conv Imagine if a Muslim sees a Jewish flag with "I stand with Israel," threatens take your fucking flag down, or else. When the person says, "Get lost, get off my property," I'm not taking down my flag. They go and make a bomb and come and put it at their house, and it's probably the same guy that put a bomb at my lawyer's uh, near my lawyer's office in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales. I bet you it's the same fucking guy. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So imagine the difference if a, if a Palestinian Muslim did that to a Jewish community leader, all right, with an Israeli flag and put a bomb, they would be in jail in five seconds fucking flat. But when you're a fucking Jew, do whatever you like because you own the bitch cops, the pigs. You own them. Shame, as Brian Concannon would say. Shame. You should do no business. You fucking rat, scumbag, Saudi, UAE. Stop buying West Australian wheat. Stop buying anything from Western Australia. What are you, fucking slaves to these scum? They fucking hate you. They hate you. I'll tell you where everything you... Uh, any Muslims want... You, you want to ask me any questions about Western Australia? I know all sorts of things about Western Australia. You just come and ask me. I'll, I happily, I'll happily let you know. So, shooting up of a Perth mosque by Nazi race hate group Combat 18. Isn't that right, General Flynn? Radical Islam is the greatest threat to the world. For comparison to the huge lengths gone to by the WA police to raid, charge, intimidate, harass and convict me... Four members of an officially recognised terrorist gang known as Combat 18 shot four rounds through the dome of a Perth mosque with a high-powered rifle. They all admitted to being members of Combat 18. It was self-evident. Terrorist attack. Just like the guy planting the bomb in Bondi, I might add, was a terrorist attack. Just like threatening to kill Mustafa and his daughter and his two young sons in his place of business. Refused to let him out the door and repeatedly threatened him all the way to the car and he runs against the police and the police just walked off and laughed. They all admitted to being men because the police organised the harassment of Mustafa Atiyah. They organised putting Ali Amun away for seven, uh, 16 years. 
By any definition, instead of being charged with a terrorist act, which ultimately preceded the mass murder of 50 Muslim worshippers in Christchurch, New Zealand in 2019, they were charged with, quote, discharging a firearm in public and, quote, criminal damage. So, four members of a neo-Nazi group, terrorists, they're also labelled as a terrorist organisation, shoot up a mosque with a high-powered rifle to cause terror and fear in the community, and they get charged with criminal damage and discharging a firearm. (laughs) <laughs> what What more and the Muslim world leaders just sit there and take it up the ass and just keep dealing with the West they received a seven month prison sentence suspended for 12 months so they never served a day in jail these men had approached me on the street and tried to befriend me the main accused is not is not mentioned in any of the reporting Daniel Jewell former Australian Defence Force and he of course is the rat who was informing on everyone and he told me that he never went, got taken to jail. They picked him up and took him to the um, Sheraton Hotel, the Australian Federal Police, and the police have a whole floor there and spoke to him in a, in a hotel. Bradley Neal Trappett, 25 of Greenmount, appeared in the Perth Magistrates Court. So get this name, Bradley Neal Trappett, at that stage 25. So that is what, 10 years on. So he appeared in the Perth Magistrates Court alongside fellow accused Yachub Marshall Hort, 24 of High Wickham, on charges stemming from a shooting attack on the Suleimani Mosque in Queen's Park earlier this year. The men were not required to plea to charges of possessing an unlicensed firearm, unlawfully discharging a firearm from or on or across the road, and destroying or damaging property. There are all the links. It's all there in my document. You can download it. It's a neo-Nazi terrorist organization. There's more Perth mosque attack, firebombed, anti-Islam, sprayed in act of hate. Again, if you want to do anything against Muslims, not a problem. But precious fucking Jews must not be touched because they own the fucking police. They run all the fucking drugs. (laughs) <laughs> the police intercept unit, Robert Critchley. Now, how could associates of the WA police have found out about my email the same way the WA police found out about my call from then Minister Joe Francis, the WA police data intercept unit, which uses the Israeli company Variant to intercept communications. Police employed in this unit have been charged for, quote, tipping off neo-Nazis in the past. Corrupt cop Robert Critchley. Right? was convicted by a jury last year of attempting to pervert the course of justice. A former senior constable was supposed to be monitoring calls on January 15, 2010 during a covert police operation into white supremacist groups when he made an anonymous call to Murray Holmes, a friend of the operation's target, Jacob Hort. Critchley cryptically told Mr. Holmes he should tell his, friends with an, tell his friend with an American wife to get a new SIM card. During the trial, the prosecution argued that Critchley was sympathetic to the white supremacist group, but the defendant denied the allegations and maintained his innocence. I met Mr. Suresh Rajan, one of the uh, um, Jew, uh, like community leaders, ethnic community leaders, and he said this to me over coffee. Quote, 3,000 members of the Perth Jewish community have the political class by the balls in this state. That's a fucking quote. Quote, how many likes you fucking arrogant fuckers? When are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? Look at this. Death threats made against Muslim family. He believes this was covered up. Extremist behavior towards police. All right. That's what Valletta wrote about me. Extremist. I'm an extremist. And my behavior towards police, meaning I had threatened her. I'll threaten you now, you fucking bitch. Those were their ridiculous charges, including offending Stephen Liebich. Offending him. Look at this clown. Look at this absolute clown. Jewish community, a clown. Look at this. Appears to be radical radical material. I I kept saying, what's this radical material you keep? What is it? What the fuck is it? They can't even tell me. I'll tell you what, I hate fucking cops now. Of course, good cops came and shook my hand and apologized to me. But as 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 an organization, I fucking hate them. And as far as I'm concerned, every cop I ever meet's a piece of fucking shit until proven otherwise. And when my old man was a cop, Superintendent Graham Davies, who was a superintendent of recruiting, my old man's old sergeant, I was a former registered nurse, worked in emergency departments. You get to know cops. You're friend with cops. You worked with cops. Now I fucking hate cops. I totally understand why criminals hate cops because the cops are the fucking criminals. I'm telling you now, I'm not being an extremist. They're fucking pieces. I hate, I hate police, period. I try to be nice. Well, I try to remember the good people that shook my hand and apologized. But as an institution, you're all fucked. You deal all the fucking drugs. LAP, all of them, they deal all the drugs. Watch Training Day with Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke. 
and and fucking The Departed with Jack Nicholson and Matt Damon and Leonardo DiCaprio. That's how it works. They deal the drugs. All these big, well-known gangsters are all rats for the fucking police. All of them. The police are the problem. And the law is the problem. Get rid of this war on drugs. This is, when you're a Muslim, you're going to fucking jail. When you're a fucking racist, scumbag, fucking Jew, oh, no problem. No problem. Poor baby. Poor little baby. Oh, no. Oh, no, he didn't mean to. We've got a psychiatric report. He's having a bad day. Didn't have a cup of tea. Didn't have a cup of Earl Grey fucking tea before he made the bomb. Simply put, this piece of shit, this piece of shit, is a piece of shit, Maurice Weiss. A rich, scumbag, racist, scum, Zionist Jew out of Sydney, Bondi Beach, went up to someone with a pro-Palestinian flag. He didn't say kill the Jews, said I stand with Palestine. And he threatened the guy to take it down. Then he made a homemade bomb and stuck it at his house. And this mofo, this piece of racist Jew scum. Oh, no. Is he going to be charged with criminal damage? trespass maybe not a terrorist plot to plant a bomb to cause terror and fear in the community and get 10 years jail no he's a fucking criminal racist zionist genocidal fucking jew so he just walks because they own fucking everybody and i know they own everybody it's like the finks motorcycle gang let's go to the finks bikey gang the finks bikey gang <laughs> There they are. Stephen Wallace, who organized my beating in jail with corrupt prison officers that were bringing drugs into the jail. There's Bam Bam, his enforcer, raving lunatic, got his throat cut. Shame I didn't fucking finish him off. Wallace is still there hanging with all the Jews and the, uh, and the, they tried to recruit me, and the, um, um, the uh, corrupt police. There's my bruised arm. That's, that's six weeks after the break. Six weeks. I said, my arm is really sore. It's a bruise. You'll be fine. It's a bruise. You'll be fine. It's a bruise. You'll be fine. That was uh, part of the beating in jail. It was a lot worse than it looked. It was battered and bruised all over my body. They jumped all over me. I have no recollection. There's the local drug dealer, the ICE task force, Inspector Tom Clay, multimillionaire with that 40 fucking rental properties under his command. Oh, no, no. He's not dealing the drugs. No, of course not. Of course not. There they are. Corrupt cops, planning evidence, Carl Casilli, a heroin and meth and cocaine addict detective involved in murder and all sorts of stuff. Again, you got to, this is gold. This is absolute gold. It's the biggest scandal in WA, if not Australian history. And no one even gets it. There they all are, McCanty. They are all uh, Masons and most of them are Jews. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. His family are Jews. Straight out of the Jewish community. And there's his good friend, uh, Inspector um, Steve Jancic. That's how he gets away with everything because there's his, there's his mob, there's his oh, inside the McCandy family's tribal battle for millions, tribal battle. Okay, the Jews, they live in the heart of the Jewish community. Here we have 12 law enforcement officers who secretly joined an international police-only bikey gang are under investigation. As you can see that there, there is Minister Joe Francis, good man. Um, he was uh, threatened after the phone call and they let a notorious sex offender approach him and they threatened him directly and he told me that um brendan i'm more scared of my own prison officers after i stopped their drugs getting into the jail than i am of the bikies that's literally what he said there's the friend of the jews and the friend of israel good old good friend of benjamin netanyahu seven network director kerry stokes they wanted me to hang out with his friends go fuck yourself kerry and die you corrupt piece of shit paying off judges Look up Kangaroo Court, that's him. And there's our piece of shit foreign minister who completely fucked me over and ASIO I here told her to fuck off. She was never going back into politics. So I got some friends in places. Look, I'm very, very angry with this stuff and I'm deeply hurt, not just because of what it did to me personally, but because of the corruption I saw. I thought, this can't be how it is. This is fucking endemic. That's why it freaked me out. And I got ministers telling me they're scared of their own prison officers. Who, who's behind all this? Masonry? The Lodge, Jews, fucking Israel, Likud, Chabad Lubavitch, drug trafficking and everything else. That's fucking who. Whoa, we're going to wipe them from the face of the earth. Chabad Lubavitch will not be around as a group. They're going to be destroyed. Absolutely fucking destroyed. 
you know, stuff like this near the Israel-Egypt border. There's Prince Charles and, you know, the big pyramid on the top of the Supreme Court building. Nothing to see here. There's the front of the West Australian Supreme Court building. Oops, sorry. I guess I should put it on the right thing. There it all is there. You know, nothing to see here. Israeli Supreme Court building, big pyramid in front of the Perth District Court. I did an excellent uh, directions hearing where I said, you can't try me. You're a Jewish uh, temple. And it wasn't a joke. I'm bang on. I knew exactly what I was talking about. There's Mr. Sin Abe Saffron. And this is the way it is. This is the corruption. So again, when you are a criminal, racist, Zionist, Jew, scumbag, fuck, you can plant bombs on pro-Palestinian people in your community with a Palestinian flag. By fucking God, if you are a fucking Muslim, if you are an Arab Muslim, you're going to fucking jail forever. That is the way it works. That is the way it works. Oh, Combat 18. We'll look at all those links. Look at all those links. What do you reckon, Mary Silver? What's that 18 on that fucker? That traitorous piece of shit. What's that 18 mean on his shirt, I wonder? Islam is the greatest threat. These groups are all City of London, Israeli intelligence, scumbag, fucking lunatic, Zionist, scum, filth, fucking organizations. The American white nationalist movement is full of these scum. They're the brownest white nationalists I've ever seen of most of them. Look at these filthy fucking scum. Why would you want to be seen with that disgusting, degenerate scumbag Roger Stone? Look at all the evidence against them. Look at it all. And the, the clown show just can't get enough of these fucking morons. Absolute traitors. They're traitors. And they're worse than fucking traitors. And the clown show keeps going for them, keeps believing all the crap that comes out of their stinking fucking mouths. The Nazis are a creation of Jewish power in the political Zionist movement. They own that movement. La Cosa Nostra. And there's three of its best fucking members right there. Why is it that treason doth never prosper? Because for it to prosper, none dare call it treason. It's fucking treason. Can you get a little bit angry? Oh, oh yeah. Look at you with your Second Amendment. Brandon Herrera looks like he's going to win. I hope so. It might be interesting. Look at, look at your Second Amendment. Same people funding Flynn are the same people helping Brandon Herrera. So who knows? Maybe something good will come of it. See this? That's you and your fucking Second Amendment and your AR-15. Why don't you go pull your cocks? It'll be as much use when the fucking Pedro and Pablo in the fucking Bradley Infantry Viding Vehicle come and run you over. Waco style. Not going to help. Robots and drones and the Tesla self-driving camera only drones are coming. So you see two ways not going to help. So you might want to get busy and you know what? You might want to support this little lady right here. Why don't some of you useless shit for brains mention the name Mary Silver? Why don't you fucking try that? But no, none of you fucking vile, disgusting whores would ever do that, would you? Because you're all on the fucking paycheck. But we're just going to keep fighting and keep moving right along. And eventually history will be very kind to us. But I'll tell you what, you whores all on the public record, the psychological profiling and the records will be kept. And one day you're going to get a knock at the fucking door. But this isn't the place to talk about it. It's a nice pen. Thank you. Come here. Oh, come on. The SAT is not biased against bears. Jewish bears? You're Jewish? No, it's fine. It's just, it's just the kind of thing you tell someone. It seems foolish to have all this money lying around. Oh, you'd rather have it down at the bank where the Jewish guys can leer at it? Yeah! All right. Yeah, money! Woo! Woo Maybe one day Family Guy will have something to say about this stuff. Think back to when COVID happened and your disbelief when they shut down the planet. Did you feel a bit of disbelief? You've already forgotten. See how quickly we forget? Well, you know what? When... Uh, when people are held to account with all that data that's caught, when people are held to account, have a hard think. But it'll never happen to you. You live in internet fairyland and it's all fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with the great Bill Cooper and F. Scott Fitzgerald. We'll talk again very, very soon. Tomorrow I will edit up my small interview I did with Mary. Congratulations, Dawn. Leah doing great work. Just five people are just out there doing all their little bits and pieces. And uh, let's see if we can't embarrass the 400 million Americans to actually get out there off their own ass and do some work. Talk again soon. F. Scott Fitzgerald, quote, 
The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. One should, for example, be able to see that things are hopeless and yet be determined to make them otherwise. This philosophy fitted on to my early adult life when I saw the improbable, the implausible, often the impossible, come true. What is our common bond truly? Freedom! Freedom! Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And it's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's about freedom.